Hello everybody, my name is Maya and I've been a ProLove sidewalk advocate for about a year and a half now. And I wanna tell you a little bit about my story and how I got involved. So first, I have a question for you. Can you be a pro-choice Christian? Well, no, you can't, but you can definitely try. And I tried so hard throughout my life to try and reconcile those two viewpoints. So growing up, I actually don't remember when I first learned what abortion was. I just always knew what it was and I always supported it. But I do remember the first time I learned that, you know, Christians are actually not the biggest fan of abortion. <laughs> Uh-oh. So um, I remember my freshman year of high school, I went to a Catholic high school because I'm Catholic, and there was an announcement that said there was going to be a very informal debate after school. And the question was, should RU486 be legal? So for those of you who don't know, RU486 is the first of the abortion pills, also called Mifepristone. And it blocks progesterone, which means that the baby can't get nutrients and the baby can't exchange oxygen for carbon dioxide. So basically the baby starves and suffocates to death. It's pretty brutal, but I was all for it. I thought to myself, sure, of course RU486 should be legal. You know, abortion's a woman's right. But let me just check out this informal debate and see what other people are saying. So I don't remember a lot about that debate because it was a long time ago now, about 20 years ago. But I do remember ooh, being so mad because it was just a bunch of men. That's what it was. Men saying, no, RU-486 should not be legal because it kills a human being and that's wrong. And I even remember somebody going up to the chalkboard and drawing a little circle to represent the egg and a sperm to go into it and said, see, this is when life begins. Life begins at conception. And I was just thinking to myself, well, what about the woman? It's like we're talking about fertilized eggs? Oh my gosh, it made me so upset. But that was when I realized, wow, like this religion that I love so much is really at odds with my strong belief that abortion should be legal. And thinking about it now, it shows how powerful cultural messages are because I was only 14 at the time. And even then I'd already absorbed this cultural message that abortion was a woman's right and anyone who was against it was against women. So through the rest of my high school experience, I kind of ignored this conflict inside of me. And interestingly, abortion didn't really come up. So I was able to kind of uh, have these two opposing viewpoints, but still kind of move forward. Then when I went to college, it started to get to be a bit too much because of cognitive dissonance. If you guys are familiar with that phrase, it means that you have two opposing viewpoints at one time. So I believe strongly um, in my religion, in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, but I also believe strongly that abortion was a woman's right and it would be horrifying if abortion was illegal. So eventually I just decided to stop going to church because I felt the best way to reconcile these two beliefs was just to be spiritual but not religious, which is a very common refrain in my millennial generation where I just thought to myself, oh, you know, I can believe in God but I just won't belong to any religion. So then I can also believe in abortion and then everything would be okay. But that only lasted for about three years. Um, after three years, I realized I just can't worship God alone on my own without any religion at all. I really need to go back to church. So I did, I went back to mass. And of course, the first mass I go to after being gone for three years is about abortion. Of course it is. I was like, oh my goodness, you've got to be kidding me. Um, and so the priest said, and I remember this, he said, if you support abortion, you worship Moloch. I was like, oh no, I don't worship Moloch. Oh, so it just really caused a lot of internal angst. But apparently other people in the audience were even more pro-abortion than I was because they actually walked out of the mass. And he said, do you see those people walking out? They worship Moloch. And I was like, oh my gosh. What am I going to do? But I was at least proud of myself for staying the whole time. I didn't walk out. And I did what most people who have cognitive dissonance do. I just kind of ignored it. It's like, all right, that was not as I expected. So I'm just going to kind of move on and pretend it never happened. And interestingly, again, I noticed a common theme is throughout the rest of the time, abortion really didn't come up. I still went back to church. I even got involved in young adult groups, and abortion really wasn't a topic that came up. I just remember two small little incidences. So first, I remember kind of casually talking to someone in my young adult group. 
just asking, asking how his day was. And he said, oh, you know, my day's fine. But every morning when I walk to work, I have to walk by Planned Parenthood. Ugh. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just really hard when you're a pro-choice Christian to get into that whole debate and arguing was not something I wanted to do. So I just kind of smiled politely, moved along, and then the rest of the conversation was fine. A couple months after that, I was at a young adult group dinner and while I was there, I noticed this guy with a pro-life t-shirt and it said, one heart stops, another heart breaks. Oh, that made me so mad. <laughs> I just kind of seethed there in silence because again, it was an attack on women's rights. But the funny thing was that I couldn't argue with the first part, one heart stops. That's true. And I knew that as someone who supported abortion. Obviously, you can hear a fetal heartbeat. We've all heard them. So I knew that part was true, so I just kind of ignored that. And I focused on the second part. Another heart breaks. Women don't regret abortion. There's been studies to prove this. And we all know studies are 100% reliable, right? So I was very annoyed with him for spreading false information. But what was I going to do? I know that this is what Christians believe, that abortion is wrong. And so I just kept my mouth shut, again, just blocked it out, and moved on with the evening. But lo and behold, when I was 30, I was given the opportunity to put my beliefs to the test because then I myself became pregnant. And it was a complete and utter shock, especially since I did everything right. I had an IUD, a copper IUD, which is the non-hormonal one. It was offered to me free by the Indian Health Service because I'm an enrolled member of a federally recognized tribe. So we get free contraception. So I did everything I was supposed to do. I had a contraceptive method that was supposedly 99.7% effective. And yet within six months, I was pregnant. I was just floored. I could not believe it. How could I be in this 0.3% of IUD failures? It made absolutely no sense. But again, it also didn't make sense for me to be so worried about it because isn't this exactly why I supported abortion? I mean, for this exact reason, that you do everything right, but the birth control fails. And so abortion is just a last resort. You know, you would think that I would be okay with abortion since I supported it throughout my whole life. But yet here, when I was finally um, given the opportunity to put my beliefs to the test, I started to waver. But eventually I went through with it because I figured, you know, like abortion is no big deal. Isn't that what I've been saying this whole time? That you just do it and then move on with your life. And so I did go through with the abortion and the day of, I did feel a sense of relief. So when pro-abortion advocates tell you that women feel relief after their abortion, it's true. The moment of my, or moment after my abortion, I did feel a sense of relief. But the day after abortion was a completely different story. The day after abortion, I felt a sense of despair and hopelessness unlike anything I had ever experienced in my whole life. And so it turned out that that guy's t-shirt was true. It was correct. One heart stops and another heart really does break. So he was right and I was completely wrong. And it was then why I understood that our religion teaches that abortion is wrong. Because not only does it take a human life, but it causes lifelong scars for the women and the men who undergo this horrific, horrific tragedy. And I did embark on some healing. So there is a great program called Rachel's Vineyard that is a Catholic program and it's a post-abortive uh, recovery. And so I found out about that through my church, actually. And it's pretty ironic because growing up in the church, you would see Rachel's Vineyard advertisements in the local bulletin, and that would make me mad too. <laughs> like, women don't regret abortion. Oh, why are they perpetuating this false narrative, as the pro boards say? And yet here I was, now finally utilizing this service after my own abortion. Um, but again, that was not even close to being enough. So I reached out to Hands of Hope in Tucson, which is a crisis pregnancy medical center, and just asked them if there was any way I could help or volunteer because I just had to do something. I couldn't sit here in my despair forever. And so I met with somebody there and she told me about Pearl of Tucson and being a sidewalk advocate. And I'd actually never 
really knew what a sidewalk advocate was, but it just seemed like a great way to really get involved in the pro-life movement. And so I did, and that's how I'm here now. And it's really, really been helpful in just helping me heal, but also using my story to help others. I shared my story multiple times with people on the sidewalk, and I hoped that it's touched them in some way and maybe even saved some lives, especially sharing my story now with you who's watching this, maybe it will touch your life. Maybe you yourself are a pro-life Christian or pro-choice Christian um, and you're just wondering whether you should abandon abortion or abandon your faith. And hopefully this video can encourage you to abandon abortion. Don't support it. Stay with your faith and everything will be okay. So in closing, I'd like to ask you another question. Have you ever wanted to save a life? Because if you have, now is your big chance. This Abortion is the biggest human rights crisis of our time. And so if you are inspired and motivated, please get involved, whether it's to volunteer as a sidewalk advocate yourself or to donate money to help us provide gift, gift bags for the clients we see or working with Hands of Hope as a volunteer. Anything you can do to help us end abortion and promote human rights for all would be greatly appreciated.